and, and, um, and assisted the county in defending the lawsuit at great cost and, and succeeded. The, uh, the other aspect is, as Mr. Boggs mentioned, uh, when the lawsuit was filed, um, it is the policy of Union Pacific Railroad to um, cease um, dialogue with, with respect to projects. And so uh, for 20 months, uh, we, we really did not have much dialogue at all except for the litigation as UP was, was listed as, as a co-defendant. But since then, since May of last year, we reinitiated those discussions and I'll be talking a little bit more in detail later in the presentation. We also secured the support of the Port of Oakland, um, of which um, is evidenced by a letter presented to, to this board. Um, we also did replanning, and, and replanning based on, on the feedback and input that we received from the community, um, which, was, which was tremendous, and also reflecting the current economic landscape. We also brought in Spinnaker Energy. Spinnaker is, is, a, is a large uh, renewable energy company uh, that is based in, here in California, in San Diego, and to pursue generating new revenue streams for the project. And finally, uh, we established a, a schedule to prepare the draft EIR that um, is part of this presentation today. The prog progress to date, um, I'll review with you the county tasks, the Union Pacific Railroad, as well as the Port of Oakland. The county tasks completed have been um, every component that has been required of us, um, ranging from land use planning to feasibility studies for both utilities and finance, transportation analysis, as well as um, ensuring that the county um, costs per our agreement are covered. We've implemented $5 million worth of work and more recently completed uh, a, uh, a deep radar um, investigation of, of Pioneer Cemetery near Gross Landing. Um, and of course, defended uh, the project in, in the lawsuit. Our relationship with Union Pacific has evolved. When we started uh, our dialogue with Union Pacific several years ago, uh, in Union Pacific's interest was really providing a, a lease um, for us to use the tracks and then provide our own um, equipment, locomotives, um, rail cars, um, and all the other elements necessary for railroad operation. This means that we would have to partner with a, a rail operator and provide a tremendous amount of upfront capital. Today, uh, what we're talking about is actually Union Pacific actually being the operator running the trains between Crow's Landing and Oakland Bath. Um, and of course, this would eliminate the necessity of purchasing uh, locomotives and, and rail cars, etc., creating a separate enterprise. And so that helped us in, in reducing the cost uh, of the project. And certainly, as I mentioned, UP has, has uh, stated in writing their support. Uh, Union Pacific Railroad, for almost 100 years, has operated out of the Port of Oakland. Uh, they have their own facility at the Port of Oakland, an intermodal rail facility, loading and offloading containers off the ships and putting them on rail. Many of these containers go to uh, what they call long haul, which is um, a trip from basically Oakland to Chicago. The, uh, the critical uh, component of, of the port's support for the uh, inland port in Crow's Landing is the fact that we're not interfering with the long haul shipment um, to, uh, from California to Illinois, but we're really looking at a separate <coughs> spur route that would connect, that connects today Crow's Landing to to the Port of Oakland. And so the Port of Oakland sees us as a client, a customer, um, an entity that, that can provide um, further economic benefit, not only to the, here in the Central Valley, as well as um, to, to the port operations. And the port has acknowledged as well their support in writing to, to this board. With respect to ongoing activities, um, 
present economic conditions uh, require us to revisit the, the plan. And what we have done is we, we have uh, looked at uh, the comments from the community, the economic landscape, and, and, and basically right-sizing a project. And it seems to be that whether it's in, in, in the private sector or the public sector, we're all trying to right-size um, these projects and trying to create um, the, the best steps, increments, um, in order to implement our, our total vision. In this case, what we were able to do was able to eliminate about 2,000 acres out of the plan. And, and this loss of revenue, if you recall a few years ago, we were saying we needed economies of scale. We need a project that's large enough to support and create revenue streams to support the infrastructure. With the, the evolution of, of, of the uh, renewable energy area, and, and given that, that um, oil prices don't seem to be substantially going down, and certainly anything above 60 or 70 bucks a barrel um, puts renewable energy in play, um, we looked at that as, as a substitution revenue stream. And so we were able to reduce significantly the land mass. Um, and substitute that with, with the solar facility. And I'll talk a little bit more about that later in the presentation. But also, we are also focused on, on marketing, um, branding the project, um, integrating alternative revenue resources, repositioning, and of course, to complete an airport operations plan. And this is critical on the west side because um, the Patterson Airport um, time of, of existence is limited because one, it was purchased by another developer, two, you have the encroachment of the Keystone Business Park. And so we need to look at, at solutions in the near term to facilitate the movement of the genera general aviation community to, to Crow's Landing. But also we see that airport providing tremendous opportunities uh, to provide other um, aviation services as well as um, as well as uh, maintenance and storage of planes. From the marketing perspective, we've retained um, C.B. Richard Ellis, and, and this purpose is to promote and market uh, West Park. CBRE was responsible for bringing W.W. Granger, um, their West, Western uh, Regional Logistics Facility, to Keystone. And some of the very same premises that we said several years ago um, are really true, and, and, I, and the, the Granger um, uh, facility is, is a testimony to those, those premises that we started off um, several years ago. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the market in detail, uh, we have Doug Norton today. And Doug is the Senior Vice President of, of Global Port Logistics for CBRE and participates both at, at a national and international level of the company. 